Welcome to Sunday at 10. And if you're joining us for the first time, or you're with us every week, we're glad that you're here and you're very, very welcome. In these next few minutes, we hope that we're going to speak with God as we pray and hear from him as we read his word and reflect upon it. This is a space to be refreshed, encouraged and challenged by the God who's always there, who never changes and whose love for us is certain even in these challenging and uncertain times. So let's pray together. The Collect for the Day Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. On the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He spoke to them. How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. The reading brings us the story of two followers of Jesus walking home along a dusty road in the late afternoon, going home trying in the midst of their walking and wondering their chaos and their disappointment to make sense of events. I don't know much about them. One is called Cleopas, the other is Nameless. We do realise though that at times in their lives they've both made choices. At one stage they had chosen to follow or align themselves with Jesus, maybe out of curiosity or national hope. They'd been around Jesus long enough to know the story and open their hopes to him, to have expectations. They may even have been some of the 72 that Luke tells us Jesus sent out with no cloak, no bag, no purse, to find people at peace. When we meet them, they've made two further choices. They'd chosen to leave Jerusalem rather than stay and specifically they'd chosen not to believe 
the reports of the women and of Mary Magdalene. They're walking back to Emmaus, maybe they've done three to four miles already, walking, wondering, debating, discussing, and a stranger joins them on the way and asks that simple question, what are you talking about? They were talking about what had happened and they were asking, now what are we going to do? And they were wondering, so what does all this mean? And for them, it was a disappointing conversation. The stranger who we know to be Jesus chastises them. You are slow of heart, he says. Some translations just say that Jesus said to them, you fools. They walk, he talks, they listen, he explains, they stop, they eat. And together they see Jesus as he breaks bread. And then they run back. And the journey back would have been very different, but still the same areas of conversation, still the same questions. What just happened? What do we do now? And so what does that mean? And they'd have told each other as they ran how their hearts, their slow, foolish hearts, had been strangely warmed. And they returned to Jerusalem to find the other disciples in a room to burst in and say, we have seen Jesus. We saw Jesus in the road and in the inn. Only to find the disciples who stayed there saying, yes, we know. Jesus is risen, we know. Jesus appeared to Simon. There have been some realizations dawning as to the consequences of their choices. First realization would have been that they hadn't needed to have left Jerusalem. They could have stayed as Jesus asked them to. They'd left because they were disappointed. But Jesus appeared in Jerusalem as well as in the inn. And the second realization, they were probably gonna to have to apologize to the women and to Mary Magdalene. I do think there's a verse missing in the reading when the disciples on the road to Emmaus meet Mary Magdalene. But we shouldn't be too hard on them. They were simply trying to make sense of things in the midst of chaos and to do so with honesty. They were making decisions, they were having a go, they were doing the best that they could in the circumstances around them. And we too can hold our choices openly and honestly. I'm not convinced that we lose God's blessing by making a wrong turn or a difficult choice or a bad decision. Jesus appeared to the two disciples in the inn in Emmaus on the road and would have appeared to them had they stayed in Jerusalem with everybody else. Maybe they just needed the walk to figure things out, to hear his explanations and his teaching, to be honest with each other, to reflect together, to listen to the stranger they met along the way. In this story, the gift from Jesus is more than the breaking of the bread and the blessing of the food. It's Jesus' presence on the journey and his walking alongside us. And even if at times we do get called slow of heart or fools, the conversation around what happened and what do we do now and what does that mean, that's a conversation where Christ is present. That's a conversation that we need to have. Heavenly Father, even in these difficult times, we want to acknowledge and thank you for your goodness to us. Like the two disciples on the Emmaus Road, we often find it hard to understand the things that are happening around us, but we thank you for your promise that all things work together for good for those who love you. Where we are sad, bring comfort. Where we are anxious, renew trust in you. And may we be aware of your presence, 
your comfort and your love for us as we trust in your eternal purposes for us. Lord God, as your son revealed himself in the breaking of the bread, may we too have eyes open to see, to see your activity in the world, to see others as you see them, and to be those who seeing believe. We bring before you our nation's leaders, the government, the scientists and health experts, the variety of key workers on whom we rely. We thank you in this week in which she celebrated her 94th birthday for the Christian example set to us by our Queen. Father God, in this time of difficulty, give wisdom to all those making important decisions in unprecedented circumstances. We pray for those who have been directly affected by the virus, those who are unwell, those who love them and for the recently bereaved. Lord of compassion, bring healing and hope as you yourself mourn with those who mourn. And so, Heavenly Father, as we embark on another week, we ask that you would go with us and before us and that you would be our rock, our strength and our shield. And we bring these prayers before you in the name of your Son, our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. And may God the Son, who in bursting forth from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. And may God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.